Hello again and welcome to LetMeBeFree.com. This is lesson three of the mini series I'm putting together to help explain a little bit about Zone Trader Tutor and how it can help you with your trading. This lesson is going to be slightly different than normal and that I think it's going to be useful to give a little bit of background about supply and demand, how it works, how institution trades and how this gets incorporated into the principles behind the Zone Trader Tutor. So first of all, I'll discuss what we mean by current price and spread. Looking at price, we simply put what we see in the chart represents the price at which the last transaction that occurred actually took place at. So it's not the price that the trade's going to happen at, it's the price that it has already happened at. at. Compare this with the spread, which is the difference between the lowest price the seller's prepared to sell and the highest price the buyer's prepared to buy. So now we need to consider what actually needs to happen for any transaction between a buyer and a seller to occur. Well, either the buyer or the seller or both again need to make a compromise and agree to trade somewhere in between the two prices to find the spread. When this transaction completes, a new current price occurs. If we assume there's a lot more competition to buy the currency than to sell it, and we call this demand, and it's the buyer that makes the biggest compromise and price will therefore have to rise. In a reverse situation, price would need to fall due to excess supply caused by a larger number of sellers. So the main takeaway is that buyer orders create demand and sell orders create supply. So the combined value of all the buyers is more than the value of the sell orders then price must rise. And conversely, if the reverse is true, then price must fall. So next up, we'll have to look at how institutions actually enter a trade and what their motivation is for doing so. so. The most important thing we need to remember is that the reason they trade is very different from the average retail or speculative trader. The large institutions are primarily interested in filling all of their large orders at levels dictated by their clients' requirements. So they're much less concerned where price goes once all their orders have been filled. In other words, they're only really interested in the opening of a trade compared to us as speculators where we're interested in both the open and the close of any trade, the latter obviously being required so we can take profit. In the institution, they tend to get their profit from commissions paid by the client for filling orders at certain prices. However, the size of the institutional order also means that placing all of their orders in one go cannot possibly work because of something called slippage. To summarise, the huge imbalance of supply and demand that creating a massive order in the market in one go would create would mean that the price would collapse before they managed to even get a small part of their orders filled. Instead, what they need to do is to work the market, teasing it back to their required level or better, multiple times until each of their orders have been filled. Commonly, we see choppy action during low volume periods as price gets teased back to their required level falls again and gets teased back again, essentially creating a retracement and then a retest of the level where more of the institutional orders can get filled. For example, let's consider a huge sell order a bank has to fill for one of their large clients. First, enough buyers in the market have to be found to push price up to level where the client orders are waiting. Then, once price is at that level, there needs to be enough liquidity in the market from further buyers who can take the other side of the institutional order. If these buyers run out, price will eventually start going back down again, and therefore this process needs to be repeated many, many times before the entire sell order is filled. Often, the institution will need to invest some of their own money to help bring money back up to levels that they need to further orders at. The idea being that a small loss is going to be compensated by the gain of selling at their required levels. As I said, teasing price to a certain level is one thing, but finding sufficient buyers to fill a large volume of orders once it's at that level is quite another. Fortunately, in steps the retail traders. You don't know how to play the game and can either be tricked into entering a trade as it pushes past the previous high, thinking it's a breakout, before price collapses again, creating a false break, or they have stops at the previous high which when taken out by price creates the extra liquidity needed to fill the large institutional sell orders remaining. Of course, 
More than likely, price will continually collapse as soon as the buyers keep running out. So the institution does have to be patient, as I said, and have to repeat this process many, many times, potentially. So the key points here are, one, institutions have very clear levels at which they need to fill their orders. Two, price will often keep coming back to these levels until all their institutional orders are filled. And three, false breaks and triggering stops, or retail client stops, can be used to create more liquidity in the market that allows institutions to fill all their orders at the required price of their clients. To benefit from this knowledge of how price moves, we need to be able to identify on a chart the levels where institutions are placing their sell orders for supply and their buy orders for demand. And to do this, we can consider a couple of facts. Firstly, supply always occurs where there's been a period of equilibrium. This is where order flow trading will occur, followed by a breakout to the downside in price. For demand, is followed by a breakout to the upside. Back to the supply, we know this is true because for price to fall, there must have been an excess of orders of sell orders that could not get filled. Of course, the opposite applies for a breakout to the upside, where there must have been an excess of buy orders. Number two is that institutions rarely compromise on price, otherwise they will tend to lose money very quickly. Therefore, they will tend to do everything they can to bring price back to their required levels. And for this reason, we know that if price fell from a level before, then it will invariably do exactly the same time next thing gets to that level. And that is why you've got to identify these zones of supply and demand to form and then trade the retrace test back to these levels. Of course, if it was all that easy, we'd all be rich very quickly. But there are some other critical factors that need to be taken into consideration first. Firstly, price is always going to fall from a zone of supply or rise from a zone of demand. But what we don't know is how far it will go or for how long it will fall or rise in the case of demand. So the only way of really understanding this is looking for layers of demand below the supply that might indicate where price is going to fall to. Two, if an institution fills all their sell orders before the buyers run out, price will naturally, after a period of hesitation, continue up the next layer of institutional sell limb orders. And this can happen in cases where there is strong trend to the upside. One more thing, whenever we enter an order, we need to manage our risk. So it's important to always look for a good entry with a very obvious stop level where at the same time the profit margin that we accept is going to be acceptable for the risk we take on. So how does Zone Trader Tutor come into all this and help us out? Firstly, a Zone Trader Tool Tutor is a tool that can identify every possible layer of supply and demand on a chart, which gives us not only the possible entry levels, but well-defined stops. And here on our Eurology 30 minute chart, you can see that we have lines of demand, which are labeled D and the number, and they have um, layers of supply above price, which are labeled S. We have the entry levels with the stop, which are the solid lines, and the stop levels, which are the dashed lines, at very obvious points. And I'll just quickly change to another time frame so you can see better how it happens. Here's a daily chart, so we have an entry line here, solid, a stop line here, and you can see price has just come up and tested this level here and then dropped away from it because there is a layer of supply right here or residual sell orders is one way of putting it. So what Zone Trader Cheetah can also do is transpose zones of supply and demand from higher time time frames onto a smaller trading time frame. So this allows us to get the big picture, but then to minimize our risk when we actually enter our trades on the smaller time frame. So we may choose our trading direction, our target based on a day chart, but we actually look to enter on a one hour chart so that we can minimize the risk we take on and to write at the entry level of a area of demand or supply. 
Secondly, it's our trade tutor to help us to find strategies that determine how we filter out all of these supply and demand levels based on a whole multitude of parameters. And this include the current trend, the number of retests they've had already, their position relative to Bollinger, Bollinger bands, the depth of the zone, the relative position of the zone to a higher time frame zone, and many, many other factors. And I'm not going to go into them all in this lesson because there's going to be future lessons about these. But it's a very powerful tool and there's a lot to learn about it, but it can also do a lot and really help us in our trading. Lastly, Zone Trade Tutor can help us auto trade our strategies once we've actually defined them and set the parameters accordingly. And what this does is it takes all the emotion away from our trading and stops us, stops us from having to sit endlessly at our screen just to get the best low risk opportunities. And for me in Australia, when Obviously, the new Americans and the, the British are up one past asleep. I don't want to be sleeping, um, disturbing my sleep, so I can go and check, check a chart every five or ten minutes. So it's great from that point of view as well. So, of course, I mean, we touched on the capabilities of Zone Trader Tutor in this lesson. But in the following lesson, number four, we'll start going into a little bit more detail of how we can use Zone Trader Tutor to identify high probability trading areas. Thank you very much for listening and I look forward to seeing you in the next instalment soon. Cheers. Bye.